As explained in Unit 2, the multitasking required in simultaneous interpreting, as in trans-speaking, makes extreme demands on limited attentional resources. The preliminary exercises introduced in Unit 2 serve to acquire the skill of simultaneous listening and speaking, including some content processing, as in simultaneous paraphrasing. But in simultaneous interpreting and trans-speaking, content processing is required at greater conceptual depth. The interpreter processes the source text segment by segment, with a segment usually made up of a meaningful phrase. Linguistic and conceptual units need to be kept in conscious short-term memory for some time until a segment has been successfully processed. Thus, source language understanding and target language production, as well as memory storage and activation, need to be accomplished with the attentional resources available. Problems occur when the cognitive load imposed by the multiple tasks exceeds the attentional resources or processing capacity available. This basic fact is captured in Daniel Gilles' well-known effort model of simultaneous interpreting, which has proved highly useful in helping students understand why and even predict when problems in simultaneous interpreting will occur. Some of these problem triggers are known. They include high speech rate and information density, syntactic complexity, unfamiliar names and numbers. Some ways of coping with these problems have been described, and such ways of dealing with particular problems are often referred to as strategies. The acquisition of such strategies is a core element of the learning process for simultaneous interpreting and underlies many of the exercises in this unit. Exercises for acquiring interpreting skills and the learning process as a whole are based on deliberate practice. Many hours of problem-focused exercises at increasingly challenging levels of difficulty. With practice and experience, Operations that originally required conscious effort and attention can gradually be automated or performed routinely without paying much attention to them. In simultaneous interpreting, this automation of some sub-processes, such as finding corresponding phrases or technical terms, frees up attentional resources for other task demands, such as dealing with creative usage, maintaining a consistent rhythm, and monitoring and repairing one's output. As highlighted in Unit 3, a crucially important way of reducing cognitive load in the simultaneous interpreting process is preparation. The more names, technical terms, or other relevant information one has activated in memory, the more effortlessly they can be processed. However, many challenges remain and some forms of input are intrinsically difficult to process and require the use of strategies. Many different strategies have been identified and variously categorized. Strategies for solving comprehension problems, for instance, include inferencing, that is, drawing on contextual or prior knowledge to fill gaps in one's grasp of the input. Similarly, Knowledge is used in anticipation, that is, trying to predict what is about to come, so as to stay on top of what is being said, even in the case of syntactic asymmetries between the source and target languages. In the face of syntactic complexity, restructuring is an important strategy. It may consist in segmenting the input into smaller chunks, such as turning a relative clause into a separate main clause, or reordering, for example, by expressing an initial adverbial form at a later point in one's target language utterance. In many cases, flexible adjustment of one's time lag is essential for coping with input challenges as well as maintaining a steady pace in one's output. When there is a hint that unfamiliar names or numbers 
or lists of items will be mentioned, reducing one's time lag to a minimum will make it possible to repeat or transcode the input. Otherwise, such strategies as generalization or approximation may have to be employed. Conversely, when it is unclear where an impromptu speaker is going, a longer time lag is needed to grasp ideas and turn them into coherent output. When input speed and information density are very high, which will very often be the case, strategic compression or even omission can help retain the core of the message at the expense of some details or presumably secondary information. The overall goal in the skill acquisition process for simultaneous interpreting can be reached only step by step, through practice, using appropriate materials. The order in which the various practice materials in this unit are used should reflect a progression from most easily doable to severely challenging and even all but impossible. The series of exercises therefore begins with material that features a particular source of difficulty so that certain strategies for dealing with it can be practiced. This would be done for each source of difficulty, one at a time. In fact, however, most authentic or realistic practice materials involve a mix of problem triggers, so the most challenging material can be assumed to comprise a large number of challenging input features each at a high level of difficulty. Practice materials can therefore be reused each time focusing on a particular source of difficulty. Repeating an exercise can help consolidate strategic responses, but it should always be kept in mind that interpreting is, by definition, a once-only performance and should therefore be practiced on material not previously known.